in this video, what I would like to do is set up and try to understand a little bit about a memory circuit, sometimes referred to as a latching circuit, or a three-way circuit, or a, a three-wire circuit, or a uh, start-stop station. Okay, now I'm going to go in a little bit of a different direction as I usually go, because I usually, in these episodes, try to go from the digital logics and then work my way through. But in this one, I'm going to start in the motor control uh, circuit right here. So this is your very common memory circuit, okay, where you have a control relay controlling, uh, which can latch in memory, okay. Um, now, we're going to use a not circuit here, a not diagram. I have a video on this that I've just published before this. So if you haven't watched that, this may be a little confusing. So you can go back and watch that and I'll link that in the description. If not, you can just watch it and try to see if you understand it. So basically the logic here is this start button or memory off of this control relay, not the stop button. So, the, so it would be start button, memory, not the stop. Okay, and this mean what I mean by this is, is it activated? Is it activated? Is it not activated? So what happens here is when I activate the start button, this latches on, this turns on. When this turns on, there are contacts that close. You can physically hear a click on them. Okay, they will actually close. And then the electricity will flow through here, down through the stop button to the memory to the coil. That coil is also latched in a second set of contacts that activate solenoid one and the cylinder extends. Now to stop this, because this is a spring return, all I have to do is hit the stop button here. When I hit the stop button, that turns off the power to the coil, opening the switches that were closed because of the electromagnet, and that opens them up, that turns it off, this returns it. Now, sometimes you do this in digital fundamentals or digital logic, sometimes you don't. But if I wanted to, this would be the logic here. So I have my start button here and my stop button here. Now notice I have this running through a knot, okay? So this knot, this combination right here is represented by this stop button. So when I activate this, oops, I activate this, memory runs through to the AND gate, the push button is not activated. So this, there's a one here and a one here. So that activates the AND circuit, comes through here. We get an output here through a one and the light is activated. When I hit the stop button, there's a one here. That means there's a zero here, which shuts this down, okay? So um, now when I go to activate this, it comes through here down through here. Now, this is how the memory works. Here's an OR gate. So it's the start button or memory, meaning right by the output, I have a line coming back as an input to this OR gate. Okay, so let me start it, stop it, and start over again. So I have my stop button. It's not activated. My start button, as soon as I activate my start button, it comes down through here. I have both ones here and here. So the truth table for my AND gate is true. I do have a videos on AND and OR gates, okay, in this series. And then this signal comes back up around, latches the other side of the OR, so this can go false, okay? So when I activate this, it's like pushing this start button, all right? When I let it go, it's disengaging this start button, yet the output is still true because power comes in through here, all right? So that is the digital version of a start-stop station, uh, commonly referred to as a three-wire control sometimes and a motor starter. There's a lot of different names for it out there. Now, let's get into it on a pneumatic circuit. This can get pretty confusing. So if I wanted to have memory on this circuit, there's a couple of ways to do it, but it becomes a little more mind-boggling in pneumatic circuits. So this is how it works. This is my start button. This down here is my memory, okay? Here I have my stop button. Now my stop button I have, so this is confusing. This would be considered a normally open stop button, okay? Because 
on a pneumatic circuit because there's always there it's always it would always allow air to go through until I activate it. But on a stop button, this would be considered a normally closed push button. Okay, but they do the same thing in this circuit because one is about the flow of air or oil and this is about electricity flowing. Okay, so this one, a normally closed, allows electricity to flow through on a switch, a normal, on a pneumatic system or a hydraulic system or any really fluid flow system. It's normally open, allows flow to go through it at any time. So it's definitely a little bit different. So let's run this and see how it works. So I'm gonna activate the start button here, okay? This goes in through an OR gate, okay? That runs down through here, okay? Then, because this is activated here, now pressure flows back through here into here, pushing this over. So I can release that stop button, and now, just like this line right here coming back to the OR gate, it flows through to here, uh, allowing oil to flow through. So it's the push button or memory, not the stop button, okay? So now when I activate this normally open 3-2 uh, valve, I activate it, it's going to close it, shutting, the, shutting it off. So when I activate this, this retracts because, and we lose pressure here. So this, the spring over here overcomes this. So no air can flow through here anyway. That disengages it, retracting the cylinder. So the logic here is the or, the push button or memory, not the stop button, okay? All right, so now this is out, latched into memory and I disengage it. This is very different, right? Because one, th these over here are purely electrical. Over here, we're competing with the logic that is inserted into a pneumatic system. So this idea of using this normally open as our not in the circuit, the way that we're using normally closed button up here is very, it can be very confusing and it can be one of the hardest things to translate from a pneumatic logic to ladder logic. That, there, there can be a lot of confusion there when we start talking about this, okay? So when we uh, look at these circuits and we understand, if we can understand that all three of these are really accomplishing the same thing, in particular, the pneumatic logic, okay? Very, very cool. So let's take one more second and talk about one other thing. This here is the control circuit, okay? This is the power circuit. All right, the power circuit on this just happens to be pneumatic, okay? Where this is, the, 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 the control circuit is electrical. Over here on my purely pneumatic circuit, the, this right here is my control circuit, all right? And this right here is my power circuit. Here, my, my control circuit is pneumatic and my power circuit is pneumatic as well. It's very common in ladder logic when we're controlling motor starters and contactors, things like that, to have both the power and the control circuit be electrical, okay? You can also do that on a fluid power system. Here I'm using pneumatics, but this would be similar in a hydraulic system, okay? This might not be the most eloquent way to get the same logic, but it does work. Okay, so anyway, I know this can be a pretty confusing topic. So if you're just joining this uh, series right here, you may want to go back a little bit and kind of trace through as we've built up to this. All right. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and subscribe button. Thanks.